We were wondering about what does it mean to be a woman? It is a cruel and bitter irony that I'm publishing this movie on the same day that the Supreme Court of the United States struck down Roe versus Wade. My name is Marnie Gelfman, and I live and work in New York and part-time in Philly. Hi, I'm Rona Hoffmeyer. Um, I live and work in Seattle. Hi, my name is Dory Miller, and I currently live and work in the suburbs of Philadelphia. These three artists currently have an exhibition at Philadelphia's Plastic Club. It's called Fuite en Avant, which means fleeing forward. Due to COVID phobia, I skipped the opening, but met Dory Miller at the Plastic Club on June 8th and peppered this Pennsylvania Academy graduate with questions. The three of you met at the Academy, is that correct? Marnie and I graduated in 2020 at the MFA program and Rona was in the BFA program. We're all from 2020. Explain how this show came to be. Roberta Gross, the exhibitions manager, asked if anybody wanted this gallery, the Bob Jackson Gallery, and I said, I would like it, please, for this collaboration we were thinking about. And she gave it to us for the month of June. So then off we went. Is there a theme to the show? We were wondering about what does it mean to be a woman? And the word that I came to after contemplation was clandestine, and I didn't like that. I didn't want to stay there. So I said, let me search for its opposite, and the antonym is manifest. And this is something I chose to represent manifest. And then one of these double-sided artworks went to each of the artists to just kind of chew on and contemplate over the year while we were making separately where we lived. I asked each artist for a brief audio file about their work. Here's Dory Miller. The large painting is titled Pulling Ether and is the most recent and large work from my Fleur de Claire series, which were diminutive due to being shut in during the pandemic and without a studio. This painting is a return to oils and a larger scale now that I'm in a studio again, and I like to paint large paintings. The Pulling Ether painting and the Fleur de Claire series was inspired by drag culture and suggests that we are safe to create and be who we want to be. Dream Bird is the sublime manifestation of a dream that I had once. It's about a sleepy memory of chosen family finding each other. And then there are the five new works from my ongoing mono paint series, which are smashes and swirls of paints that I use in the larger painting, Pulling Ether. And then there are two works from a new body of work I call Radical Neutrals, where two complementary colors have been mixed to the tipping point of discernment. The neutrals are dense with explosive color. They just look like they are canceling each other out. And then finally, there are the Celestial Event Flower Essences, which are an auspicious takeaway for the exhibition's visitors. The intention is of delighting you into a state of luxurious homeostasis. The last time I checked, there were 14 bottles left out of the original 100 during the opening. And happily, I snagged two of them. Rona Hoffmeyer is a double threat. She's a wonderful artist, plus she can do this. When I was asked to sing at the opening, I chose two arias from the Mozart opera The Marriage of Figaro, as a tongue-in-cheek reference to the complexities of love and relationships. I performed the arias a cappella, just as I would in my own home while going about doing chores around the house. I'm an interdisciplinary multimedia artist and work in various genres, including painting, sculpture, installations and performance art. I often merge these genres and employ a wide variety of mediums to execute my work. The seven artworks that I have on display is from a series I started in March called Domestic Goddess. 
prompted and in response to passages and readings from Alexandra Kokoli's book, The Feminist Uncanny, where she discusses the connection between femininity and domesticity. In my work, I take a closer look at the cultural association of idealized femininity, the gender division of labor in the house, the philosophical interweaving between femininity and the home, and the entrapment and oppressive nature of the endless repetitive cycle of domestic maintenance and housekeeping. The art is created from ready-made objects and recycled materials that the homemaker encounters daily. Dust from my vacuum, food, paper shopping bags, a frying pan, etc., and incorporate these everyday disposable materials with traditional art mediums like oil paint, creating a connection between the domestic environment, the mundane task of housekeeping, and fine art. The seven pieces on display have ambiguous titles and are simultaneously humorous and serious. The materials I used in each piece have symbolic meaning, and the works are open to interpretation by the viewer's own references, filters and life experience. The works were created spontaneously and intuitively, with no pre-planned drawings, but in a manner where I explored the materials and had the objects and themes reveal themselves to me. Now let's hear from Marnie Gelfman and the real-life event that inspired this body of work. I had to have a hysterectomy this past fall. As a woman and as an artist, I had to process that the organs that produced life inside me now had to be taken out, and what that meant to me spiritually and physically. The work poured out of me in response to this experience. Getting creative was very healing. The female body is often described by the exterior, and yet the interior is really the machine and the womb of our children. I had to accept that a past stage of my life was over. I have mostly works on paper, one installation as well, and some photos, but the works on paper start with a Garden of Eden series. Flowers are a metaphor for our bodies. I'm working with blood red, pinks, golds, in response to this experience as well. Another piece in the show is called Venus. I had a previous life as a home furnishings designer at Macy's, so I'm very much at home with using wallpaper and different items like that. So I painted the female figure on top of the cream and gold wallpaper piece, and it had a flower motif in the background. That, too, was linking the metaphor of flowers and the body. The Vessel series was the most spontaneous of all the pieces in the show. I used watercolor and gouache, words, pencils, paper that wasn't precious so that I could really get in quickly with this work. I looked at artists like Tracy Emin and Louise Bourgeois, women who roared with strength. I also loved text in work, and I looked at Clarissa Pincola Estes's book, Women Who Run With the Wolves. The body remembers, the bones remember, the joints remember, even the little finger remembers. Memory is lodged in pictures and feelings in the cells themselves. Like a sponge filled with water anywhere the flesh is pressed, wrung, even touched lightly, a memory may float out in a stream. And I have an installation called Broken. It's a painted tablecloth. The vessels cannot be used. You can't drink out of the glass that is broken and glued back together. While we can't fix everything, we still can be whole if we process and go through it. And visually going through this experience was really wonderful for me. Although the Pennsylvania Academy has changed a lot since I graduated in 1980, one constant remains. The friends you make there will be friends for life. So I wish all the best to these three Academy friends as they proceed through their real and creative lives. Their show at Philadelphia's Plastic Club will continue through June 30th, 2022. And please remember, women's rights are human rights. <laughs>